Welcome back, everyone, to One YL or One Year Later. My name is Corey, and this is a podcast show amplifying the voices of people taking adversity into their own hands and changing their world and the world around them. And today we have a very special guest. We have the one and only Felicia Hano. Felicia, what's up, girl? Thanks for having me, Corey. Heck yeah, heck yeah. You guys, if if I accidentally don't call her Felicia and I call her Fish, that is one of her nicknames that most people have given to you and you have had for a very long time. But yes. also I've come to a new nickname from our friend Chris that I might call her Felicia because that's how you phonetically spell your name. So come on, it is. I'm just going to call, I'm going to call you whatever I want. Just throw it out there. Everything is acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, guys. Well, I'm so stoked to have Felicia here on 1YL for a lot of reasons, but um, I feel like most of you watching today um, know Felicia because of her incredible gymnastics. Um, she competed at UCLA, um, but also had an illustrious career prior to UCLA. She has one of the fastest moving level up through the JO program stories I've ever heard of in my entire life. We won't really get into that because that didn't happen in the last 365 days, but a lot did happen for Felicia in the last 365 days. So, Fish, you made it to Arkansas and we're going to figure out how you got there. Okay. That sounds so, good. That sounds good. The first question that I ask every guest is where were you one year ago, physically, emotionally? Wh what were you doing? And, and like, Let's get a starting point and then we'll work our way to now. Oh man, okay. Well, number one, first of all, I was in California, I was not in Arkansas. So I was at home because everything had kind of recently shut down because of COVID. Um, we're in April now, so it's pretty much like a month after everything kind of happened. Um, at home, finishing up school online, which was something that was really different for me. Um, but yeah, at home, finishing up school, kind of forced into retirement. Um, mentally, I was obviously very upset. I was not ready to kind of say goodbye to, to the sport that I had been doing for so long, um, but just was managing as best as I could, and that's where I was at. Yeah, for real. Well, so, I mean, we had Maddie Koshin, your roomie, one of your besties on the show yes. last week. And she shared with us a little bit about, you know, when the roomies like had to like really come together and kind of realize that you wouldn't be living together. You guys were heading home. Everyone kind of went their separate ways because par for the course with the shutdown and where things went. But what was that like to kind of go from like this dream situation of living with three of your best friends and doing the sport you love to obviously like home isn't too bad either you have an incredible family but nonetheless it felt you got you got a little bit shorted i would say um from your time that you would get to to spend with them so w talk us through that a little bit what was that like no absolutely i was i love my family so much number one <laughs> but definitely was not ready to move back home um like i guess coach was talking about like we were all we all had so many plans together after our season was done. It was our senior year. We were kind of excited to experience um, college as like normal students afterwards, doing all the things. UCLA has like a lot of fun different things for their seniors. So we were kind of looking forward to those different traditions. And then from all of it just like pulled under the rug, we were all just kind of like, ah. All of the things that we had planned um, were kind of just like out the window. And we all had to decide like really quickly if we wanted to like keep the apartment that we were staying in or move out just because at the time we didn't really know the severity of the situation of COVID and all that stuff. We were like, you know what, maybe if we can stay in LA and make things work, we'll do that. But um, once we realized that it was a lot more serious than we had anticipated, Coach decided to go back to Dallas and all of us had decided to just go back home. It was just going to be easier that way. So it was really, yeah. really sad. We had um, a lot of like bonding nights before we all had to leave, but yeah. Yeah, man, it was hard to watch from afar. I'll be honest, you know, I feel like I had a little bit of a front row seat just getting to be a part of the UCLA team back in 2016, 17, when you guys were all there. And, and so I like, 
loved you guys all so much. And so that moment that I heard that the season was taken out, it was just devastating. But what's the coolest part about your story is that obviously everyone has permission to have their own little pity party for as much time as they need. Yeah. Um, and, and like, truly you guys, you guys took the time that you needed and you guys did what you needed to do um, amidst like needing to stay home and like all the, the different protocols that we were under. But at the same time, there was like a really cool like phase of time where you did get to have a lot of good family time at home. I know there was a lot of renovations happening at your house. Like so many. I'm sh- I'm sure it was loud and, and crazy, but but you were you were finishing school um, and you got your degree in political science. Is that right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. So you got your degree in poli sci from UCLA, and then at the time. Can you explain to everyone like what your career path you thought was your career path and then like what that June, July timeframe like looks like? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So originally, I mean, I love political science. I love government. I think that was, um, I wanted to do something in that field. And my dream was working for the FBI and working for some type of agency like that. Um, as been a goal of mine ever since I was really, really young. And I set that standard for myself as from a young age. Um, and then everything kind of shifted with COVID. Um, I felt like gymnastics had been taken away from me way too soon. Um, I wasn't quite done with the sport yet, I felt like. And I knew I, I wanted to be involved with it some way for at least one more year, just kind of. My original thinking was I wanted to end my gymnastics career on my own terms. And I didn't really get that opportunity with COVID. And I mean, this amazing opportunity in Arkansas and Jordan had presented itself. And I was just like, you know what? Never in my life am I going to get another time like this where I'm just kind of like things are up in the air. I don't really know what's going to happen. Um, and I just I just decided to take it and ended up here in Arkansas. It's awesome. It's awesome. So you guys just finished um, your season. Um, you have two more athletes that get the opportunity to go and compete and yeah. uh, represent the University of Arkansas in next week at nationals. Um, but okay, I got to Let's just ask the question. Like, give me your feelings, all the feels after an incredible season of you dedicating your your life really to living in Fayetteville, Arkansas, becoming a Razorback after four years of being a UCLA Bruin. I mean, quite frankly, I know the feeling. Um, and and I would say like, like tell us where you're at now because it's, it's fresh. You like literally flew home from regionals where you guys took third in an absolutely difficult region but you guys put up an incredible fight and kudos 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 absolutely but how are you feeling now after making that decision you not you didn't go to the fbi you decided to take this incredible opportunity as the volunteer assistant coach at the university of arkansas where are you at emotionally like where i want to know i want to know what you feel Well, first of all, this has been such an amazing, amazing season. I'm so proud of every single one of the girls because they, they literally had to give up like their social normal college life to pursue this season and to do well this season because there were so many COVID protocols that we had to um, take on this year. They basically, like I said, had to give up their social lives, their normal college lives in order to be able to do gymnastics this year. So I'm just really so, so proud of them. And they just accomplished so much despite in the face of adversity and i think that really just shows the type of program that we have here at arkansas um and they're they're just an amazing group of humans and i was just really fortunate to get to work with them but yeah it was a really big transition when i kind of was like okay well i'm gonna put the fbi thing on on the back burner and pursue this just because i knew if i didn't i was i was probably going to regret it just because like i said gymnastics here didn't end on the terms that I wanted it to. And I was getting the opportunity to end it potentially the way that I wanted to. Um, and all I can say is I'm hooked. I, I love college gymnastics so, so much. Um, and as of right now, this is definitely something I could see myself doing for a really long time. And I think as an athlete, I really enjoyed, not, I obviously enjoyed doing gymnastics in college, number one, but 
I think also just growing as a person and having amazing coaches that kind of helped cultivate me as a person. And I wouldn't be the person that I am without all the coaches that I had in college. And I think I really liked that aspect of it. And I really enjoyed that aspect this year, just getting to know the girls personally um, and help them on a level, not only with their gymnastics, but also with their life, because I've been there, I've done that, and I understand what they're going through. And I think that part just really, really hooked me on. And I, I love it so much. I love interacting with them on a daily basis. And it's really cool to see the behind the scenes things that I really didn't get to see as an athlete. And I love it. I love it so much. And I am officially hooked. So <laughs> I'm the type of person that takes things like one day at a time. And I don't really know what's going to happen in the future, but I'm just on this roller coaster that is my life right now and I am absolutely enjoying it and I just I love the Razorback community so much I love Arkansas and I never thought that I'd be like yeah Arkansas you know and it is absolutely amazing here I love it so much yeah uh I love hearing it I I can like sense the happiness and the joy in your voice and and I remember talking to you we did an online gym school class back in April and I remember like we hopped on the, the the video call and I was like, how you doing? And you're like, oh, you know, <laughs> we're in it. We're in it. Yeah. But then we yeah. like got to turn it around with like inspiring young gymnasts and the way that we got to with that. But to see you 365 days later and to know that like your chin is definitely up a little bit higher and you like are just beaming with joy with what you, the opportunity that you were given the last 365 days, like it's it's a pleasure as a friend to get to like see you grow through all of that and to know the impact that you have made on the 16 girls that are at the university of arkansas man it's it's been really really awesome to watch so congrats fishy you're doing a great job thank you it's been wild but i honestly like i can't picture myself anywhere else really yeah can't. i love it Okay, so let's uh, let's get back to this like roller coaster of how we got there, right? So we were not doing so great. We were sitting at an apartment, realizing our best friends were flying away from us, and then this opportunity presented itself. And the question that I ask everyone, and you can kind of do whatever you w would like with it, is uh, what are two turning points of the last year that really brought you hope to get you to where you are right now? And uh, you can take those where, however you wish, but what kind of things could you use as turning points that could potentially be something that someone else is going through right now that would be encouragement for them to just continue to put their head down and follow their heart and follow their dreams and, and goals to get to a, a place of better, of happiness, of betterness, of whatever you want to call it. What would those two turning points of the last year be for you? Oh man, um, I think one of them um, I don't know if it's like a turning point, but it was definitely a period where I was, it was like really close to graduation and I was online looking for jobs and there was nothing really that piqued my interest and nothing that I felt like I could be a hundred percent like passionate about. And that was like really hard because I was like, you know, I need to get a job. Like I'm about to graduate and I really don't have anything like lined up for me yet. But I just wasn't interested and I wasn't passionate, I guess, is the only word I can feel that describes this, that everything that I was looking at, everything that I was reading through, I just wasn't, I wasn't motivated. I knew that I wasn't going to be able to give my 100%. And it was still in the back of my mind, gymnastics, like, I still wanted to somehow be involved with the sport. I still felt like my time wasn't done yet. And I wanted to figure out a way to be a part of a program. And it was actually a conversation I had with Mercedes and we were just sitting there and I was just like, I don't know what, like, I don't know what to do. Like, I still feel like I have so much left to give into the sport, but I just don't know how to, how to do that with COVID and everything and all these other layers and elements and things like that. And she was like, you should call Jordan, call Jordan. If anything, she can just give you some really good advice. And I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to do that. And so I had texted her one day. Originally, I did not want to coach. I asked about uh, like potentially like a director of ops type position or something like that. And she reached out to me. We had a few calls and she was like, I think you'd be really, really good for this fit. And I think she and she was like, I think you'd get out of it what you intended to just to kind of figure things out and gymnastics on your own terms and see what see what you want to do next. 
And so I think that was a really big turning point for me was reaching out to Joe and just figuring, just telling her, I really don't know what I want to do, but I just know that I want to be a part of a program and do something with that just because I feel like my time wasn't done with gymnastics yet. And so that was really big for me to reach out and to ask because I'm the type of person that is just like, I'm going to figure it out. We'll just see what happens. And I am not the one to be like super outspoken about my feelings and things like that. And I laid it all out to her. I was like, I don't feel like I'm done yet. I'm really sad that I had to be done. And she gave me this amazing opportunity. And I, if, if I could give a piece of advice to somebody is not to just settle for anything because looking for jobs and potentially working in an office or corporate or whatever, you know, I just like knew I wasn't going to be happy and I was settling with that. And honestly, like, I'm just so glad that I followed my heart and I followed my passion because I don't think one, I'd be as happy as I am today if I was working somewhere else. And I just, I like, I, I really can't picture myself anywhere else. I really can't. Yeah, that's so cool. And I think that what I'll like bottle up what that turning point is because I like feel I, I, I know where you were at in that time. And it on paper, after college, what it looks like the pressure is on is to like, hop on LinkedIn and look for jobs or hop on any like, you know, like a zip recruiter or something like that to like, find whatever that role is that fits your degree that then bottles up with like any other gifts and abilities that you might have been able to accrue along the along the way of your four years at university. But like Felicia and I are here to say like, I hopped in nonprofit work immediately after college. And then Felicia followed her heart saying, like recognizing that she wasn't done. There was unfinished business for her in a world that she knew existed, but like she didn't know what her space was in it. And like the only way that we were able to find those roles to really like fit the posture of our heart at the time was to reach out to someone and say, hey, this is where I'm at. Am I a good fit for you? And and it almost just like got created in a way because the depth of our heart was in a place that like, hey, we're showing up palms up, like ready to do whatever you need me for us to do. And I do have to give credit where credit is due. like reaching reaching out to someone is one piece of it but that person then helping to create and to believe in people like you and i i'm gonna go back to you for a second jordan believed in you and then was like wait we have this volunteer role you would fit it perfectly and i think you're gonna actually get out of it what what you're looking for she could have easily looked at you and said we need you because we need a vault coach but no she said i think that you're going to get out of this role what you're looking for in your heart in this time in your life. And that's okay. so cool. And I would, I would say, I would argue like you don't find that everywhere, but it's something that everyone deserves to, to chase and to believe that they, they could have that in their life one day too. Would you agree yeah. with all of that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like you like Jordan didn't have to um, offer me this position. She could have said, you know, well, I could offer you advice in some other way because like we are looking for, a specific you know thing um but i she has just been so amazing she honestly i've gotten so much more responsibility than like i thought i would have i thought i was just gonna be there, be here hang out hang out with the team help out where i could and she kind of presented me with this role of being the ball coach and like creating assignments and doing all these different things and i'm honestly just so grateful because i feel like i'm still learning a lot a lot so yeah so cool it's so cool that's awesome. So that's definitely something that I think everyone can take take some time to to learn from. Um, and I'm gonna like let that be the big turning point of your last year because knowing I know your story pretty well, and mm -hmm. I got to walk with you pretty closely this past year, which it was such an honor for me. But that you guys truly that that is like something that you guys can all learn from and something to learn from Felicia. But um, you know, I was excited to have her on here because her story is so unique, because she took her life into her own hands and decided to chase something that she didn't believe was possible. And, you know, I think it's 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 something for everyone to hear and to be encouraged by and to be able to uh, lift their chin up a little bit taller, knowing that there is there can be a light at the end of the tunnel and there can be um, the, the, the um, ability to finish unfinished business, right? Although Felicia didn't get a 10 this year, 
like she was chasing in her college career, she was trying to get those girls that she was coaching all year attend every single day in the gym. And like, that was probably just as rewarding, right? Honestly, like it is so much more rewarding to be a coach than it is like when I was actually competing. Um, I think I, I honest, I mean, I love gymnastics. I love doing gymnastics and I love competing, but being a coach, oh my gosh, like seeing them shine, it makes my heart so happy. And it really just like lights a fire in me because I know what they did to get to that point of being in competition. And I encourage them as best as I can. And once I see them succeed, oh my gosh, it is, it's amazing. It's so cool. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Well, I, I honestly, I feel like people are going to be so encouraged by this. So let's, let's round out this episode um, with the, the big old question that everyone usually gets stumped by, but I know you'll handle it well. Felicia, does your one year ago self believe, did, did your one year ago self believe that you could be here one year later? Short answer, no. <laughs> um, I honestly didn't know what my one year later would look like. Um, I felt like a year ago, I was in this space where I really didn't know what the next day was going to bring. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. I was kind of hitting that like not midlife crisis, but kind of like the quarter life crisis where I just had no idea what was what was what I was going to do. I just knew that I wanted to do something that was going to make me happy. And that brought me joy. And I didn't know what that was going to look like. And to say like one year later that I found that that I found my happiness, my joy again, is just absolutely incredible. And I, I honestly couldn't I, I didn't know I was going to be here a year ago. It's awesome. It's awesome. Well, the whole purpose of this show is to help people think retrospectively, to look back on the last year and to to like honestly give themselves a pat on the back for facing the fears that they did, to face the adversity that they did, and to truly see that you are part of a group of people who are world changers and you're changing the world around you and you're changing your own world just by making one decision at a time. And I can honestly say I witnessed you changing the life of 16 student athletes this year in Fayetteville, not to mention all of the young gymnasts that you looked up to you and your college gymnastics career. And um, man, oh man, like if thinking about someone who is just uplifted spirits in, in the 2020, 2021 year, like I'm looking at her. So you did a great job and I'm so stoked for you. And I have to admit, you are one of the people that I am most excited to talk to in 365 days from now, because man, the, the world's your oyster. I'm just like ready, ready to like see what Felicia does with the, uh, the life that you are creating right now. So I can't wait for that if you're up for it. Oh, I'm so up for it. There's a lot of things that I want to do <laughs> I love this year. It. So I'm definitely a little bit more optimistic this year than I was last year. Good, good. Well, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode with the one and only Felicia Hano. It's been an honor to have her on here. Um, and I feel like we have to like, uh, finish this like in true Felicia Hano fashion. So um, how do you finish real talk with the Razorbacks? Like, what, uh, what's? <laughs> I feel like we got to finish it that way. You're so right. We really do. So I usually on real talk, I say, and we'll see you next time on Real Talk. So we can say, and we'll see you next time on One Year Later. Okay, ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. And we'll see you next time. And we'll see you next time on One Year Later. One year later. <laughs> Man, I think there's some weird stuff with the audio, but that was so fun. Okay, Fish, <laughs> you rock. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, Thanks everyone, for having me, Corey. Yeah, heck yeah. Tune in for the episode tomorrow. We got a new one every day. See you later. Ooh.